today we're talking about how to get stronger legs the way a goal you need stronger legs and in the process how to reduce your risk of injury by um, sort of eliminating or modifying some of your favorite gym exercises. <laughs> and deadlifts as kind of sneaky exercises because um, you probably use them and they feel fine when you do them and you really like them because you can load up a lot of weight and you can see that your legs are getting stronger because you can add more and more weight. But I'm gonna talk to you today about why I haven't used a barbell back squat uh, with any athlete probably in the last 10 years. Having straight bar deadlift any athlete probably in the last eight years. I'm gonna tell you why and give you some different alternatives that hopefully will compel you to think, yeah, that, that kind of makes sense. Just because we really like it and like how it feels and because it feels fine right now, it doesn't mean that it's okay. So let's dive into the back squat. So the number one reason I don't back squat any athletes anymore is because it's very hard on the back or it can be very hard on the back. And so I know you're watching and you're saying, I do them all the time, my back feels fine, uh, it doesn't bother me whatsoever. And that's why I think of these as sneaky exercises because just like ab crunches, we can talk about those in another video, but um, disc injuries in your lower back are cumulative trauma injuries. So, you know, and people will say, oh, I just bent over to pick up my t-shirt and I herniated a disc in my back. Well, that's not really the truth. That is the proverbial straw that broke the camel's back, but that isn't what caused the trauma. What caused the trauma is years of poor posture, putting your back in poor positions when you're exerting forces, um, and just you know, wearing it down. It's like taking a metal coat hanger and bending it, bending it, bending it. You can bend it lots of times and no problem, no problem, until it breaks. The other issue with the back squat specifically, so I'll still include some barbell front squats, and you'll see here, I'm gonna show you, we'll use a safety bar uh, to do some squats. Um, but the problem with the barbell back squat is, and even using the safety bar, you can do it heavy and wrong. <laughs> so, um, you know, a front squat, you can't really do it heavy and wrong because you're, you're just not going to be able to hold the bar. Back squat position, even with the safety bar, you can still do it heavy and wrong. Let me show you exactly what I mean. You've probably, if you've been in any kind of fitness club or high school gym, you've seen it. I know you haven't done it. Those guys have done it but I'll just show you what I mean to be sure well I'm getting this bar set up why don't you hit the like button because you've watched so far so obviously you like it so hit that like button subscribe so you know uh, about video oh you know what I think you have to subscribe and then hit the bell so you know about videos when they come out but I'm gonna switch these bars around and then we'll get rolling <laughs> position we can get the bar set up on our upper traps we'll sit back with our hips first so we'll sit back and then we can come back up so that's that's what we want to do but let's say this loads a little bit too heavy for me I get to the bottom I kind of get stuck my bum starts to come up first maybe my back rounds and then I do kind of a deadlift hybrid to get it back up again and I can do that because the bar is resting on my shoulders and it's kind of, it's just supported there. So I can get away with that when really I, sh I shouldn't be doing that. When you front squat and come in at it this way, well, if I get down in that bottom position and I lose the, the bar, you know, I'm really just gonna dump the bar off the front. So that's why I prefer a barbell front squat. But to be honest, I don't even really use it that much anymore. As a goalie, you don't need a lot of bilateral strength. So, you know, your feet side by side and both legs doing the same thing at the same time. As a goalie, you need more single leg movement. You need more frontal plane movement side to side. So why don't we take away an exercise that, yeah, in a generic sense, gives us stronger legs, add some wear and tear to our hips, to our back over time, why don't we replace that with one that actually really translates much better on the ice. When you look at it, you'll say, yeah, that, 
that's more like what I need to do. It'll spare your hips some wear and tear because you're going to use a little lighter weight, which some of you are going to freak out, but don't freak out. <laughs> it, it helps. Um, and it's going to build some stability in that hip joint. So again, maybe we're improving, we're reducing the wear and tear, but we're also helping your hip learn how to um, stabilize itself so that we reduce some wear and tear on the hip joints over time. We're going to start with a single leg squat. Think about, so before you try the single leg squat, think about how much you would do in the gym with a barbell back squat. Uh, let's just say, because I'm not very good with numbers, let's just say you would do 200 pounds on a barbell back squat in the gym. So really then, uh, if that is strengthening my legs, I should be able to do 100 pounds on my right leg and 100 pounds on my left leg. So I should be able to do a single leg squat holding 50 pound dumbbells. So 100 pounds for each leg if I can do 200 pounds with both legs. I think when you try this, uh, you start with like 10 pound dumbbells, you're gonna find it's actually really hard. And it isn't that you're not strong, it's that your hip uh, doesn't know how to stabilize and you can't really exert a force that you can't stabilize. So that's why you know people get very strong in the gym but don't really notice a huge difference on the ice. And our, my goal is that every improvement you're making in the gym, you're like, wow, do I ever feel a difference on the ice? That's how it should feel. When you're doing the right kind of training, and that's what the goalies I work with say, like, oh my God, I can't believe how good I feel. So that's what we're going for. So start with 10 pounds and see how you do. You're gonna stand out from the front edge because I want you to have to sit back with your bum. So the first thing to move is you're sitting back with your bum. You're keeping your knee in good alignment. You can't have that knee falling in. Let me show you from the front what I mean about the knee falling in. So if I go to do my single leg squat and my knee is tracking in, that's falling in. I'm not using my lateral hip effectively to keep that knee in proper alignment. So that's one alternative. Now, you're gonna be frustrated because you're gonna be thinking, well, I can do 200 pounds, now I'm using 10 pound dumbbells and that doesn't look very cool in the gym. <laughs> and, and it's okay, stick with it because this is an exercise we use at Revolution all the time. And as, we, as our athletes got stronger with it and more as their body figured out, oh, this is how I stabilize and produce force, huh? Um, the weights went up and up. So then we would actually have athletes holding, uh, well, some of our athletes, are actually our downhill ski racers, could hold 80 pound dumbbells uh, in each hand and do those. Now, it got to be a problem that they just couldn't hold the dumbbells. So we would use uh, a 25 pound weight vest and then they would make up the difference on the dumbbells. But really what we found was that we could get them to a point where when we added up how much weight they could lift, with their right leg and their left leg, it actually exceeded how much they could do on the, on the squat before we started single leg squatting. So it will give you the strength, but also the stability to succeed on the ice. We talked a little bit about how when we're on the ice, we're not, you know, sort of doing uh, bilateral movements or, or, you know, those aren't sort of the movements that really make or break uh, whether we get there to make the save or not. It's really more a frontal plane movement that helps us get to get to the puck or beat the puck. So we can start off with just a simple squat lateral. I can hold dumbbells here. I can hold them here too, but people's shoulders get really, really tired doing that. So we'll start by just holding them down here and then we're gonna squat to the side. And I wanna get my shoulder, hip, knee, ankle stacked, this leg straight so I'm feeling a nice stretch and then a good strong push back up while maintaining a stable torso. So I don't wanna kinda do something like that to come back up. I wanna stay stable as I push through that lateral hip. And then you can accentuate that powerful push by taking it into a squat lateral, so or a lunge lateral. So we'll come out here into that same position but moving dynamically into it, and then a big push out, finding your balance point, so that transitional balance. So step out, Nice big push back up. Keeping a stable torso, it's all about getting that lateral drive from the hips. Now I know some of you tried just that squat lateral pattern and you found like, whoa, I can't even get, 
I can't even get down as low as she's getting in that video. I can't even get down to a, even a 90 degree angle at, at my knee that I'm, that I'm squatting over. That's okay too. That suggests that mobility is an issue for you. And some of these um, like more precise exercises or more subtle exercises like the single leg squat and the squat lateral, they really magnify or shine a spotlight on where some of your deficiencies are, which is good. We want to find our deficiencies and, and improve those and make them stronger. That's how we get better. So if mobility is one of your deficiencies, um, I have a simple solution. Go to your app store and just search butterfly challenge. I did a free 14 day um, hip mobility program specifically for goalies and I put it in there for you. So just go get that, work on that for the next couple weeks and you'll see that in the gym you're moving better but actually you'll feel, usually people feel like within the first three or four days, like, oh my gosh, my, my, my hips feel a lot looser on the ice. So you can check that out if if you're finding you, you're like, boy, I, I, like I just can't get down there. Um, but otherwise, that's why we don't back squat anymore. That's why I haven't back squatted. And, you know, I, tr I, I specialize in training hockey goalies, but I also train other athletes and Olympic athletes and, and, some of them have won medals, the Olympics, and, and they don't back squat. So it's not to say like, oh, but I have to because I want to get so strong. You know, if you're a power lifter, yes, you need to back squat. But if you're a hockey goalie and that's your focus is improving your performance on the ice. You know, if your focus is like, no, I, I want to, you know, be an awesome CrossFitter, then that's cool too. And that's a different sport. And I'm, so I'm not saying that you can't back squat if that's a part of your sport. I'm saying if you want to be the best goalie you can be, stop as many pucks as possible and also help maintain your hip health so you can keep playing this amazing sport that you love for years and years and years to come, then time to put away the back squat and add in some of these other options. We also don't stray bar deadlift anymore. We also don't do crunches anymore. So if you want me to make a video on why I haven't done those and I probably haven't had an athlete crunch in like 15 years. So if you want me to do a video of why we don't do that and what we do instead that still gets amazing, actually gets better results uh, functionally, then just leave a comment below and let me know and then I'll get busy and make a video for you. Otherwise, this is Maria from GoalieTrainingPro.com. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to hit the bell. I think that's it.